I am constantly amazed at the Gospel of Matthew. It's been another great week of reading. I have an hour's worth of stuff to share with you and only 10 minutes to do so. So let's get started. First, when you're reading the Bible, remember, especially the Gospels, you want to be on the lookout for expressions that refer to time and place, like this one that introduced our readings this week. Now, when Jesus had finished these sayings, he went away from Galilee and entered the region of Judea beyond the Jordan. And a large crowd followed him, and he healed them there. Where was Jesus? He was up in Galilee. Where's he headed? He's headed south. Then he stops here at the region beyond the Jordan, about halfway between the Sea of Galilee and the Dead Sea. We don't know how long he is there, but while he is there, Matthew notes, a number of grace moments and teaching moments that take place. The first one, the Pharisees come to Jesus to test him. Second, someone in the crowd with little children bring them to Jesus that he might touch them in blessing. Third, a young man comes up to Jesus with the question, which we're going to come back to later. Fourth, Jesus tells a parable, Matthew 20, verses 1 to 16, about the workers in the vineyard. A new section starts with verse 17 of chapter 20. Matthew records another reference to place, which also indicates to us timing. Verse 17, And as Jesus was going up to Jerusalem, he took the twelve disciples aside on the way and said to them, See, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and scribes, and they will condemn him to death. Where is Jesus heading? He's heading south to Jerusalem. Now, you and I already know what's going to happen there. He is going to suffer and die for the sins of the world. Now, Jesus predicts to his disciples before he gets there his death for the third time. But I'm uncertain they're really listening. And I say that because Mrs. Zebedee stops Jesus as they're walking. She makes a humble request on her knees, Mark tells us. Let these two sons of mine be executive officers in your kingdom, which is not well received by the ten other disciples. Skipping down to verse 29, we see another reference to place that indicates time because of what happens in the place and following. Matthew 20, verse 29, And as they went out of Jericho, a great crowd followed him. Now, on his way out of town on Sunday morning, Palm Sunday morning, the beginning of Holy Week, Jesus heals two blind men, and they join in the procession. The next reference is to the place is this one, Matthew 21, verses 1 and 2. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage, the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent to his disciples, saying, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you'll find a donkey tied there and her coat by her. Untie them and bring them to me. Now, here's a note to put in the margin of your Bible. From Matthew 20, verse 29, to the end of the Gospel, it's Palm Sunday through Easter Sunday. Eight days, minus the last four verses of chapter 28. So let's go back to chapter 19, verse 16. First of all, note that this is a single discourse, and these need to be read together to fully understand what Jesus is saying. This section begins with the question that the young man asks. Now, a man came up to Jesus and asked, Teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? How do I get into the kingdom of heaven? Jesus tells the rich man to get rid of his riches. Matthew 19, 21, Jesus answered, If you want to be perfect, go, sell your possessions, and give to the poor, and you'll have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. The young man goes away sad because he was wealthy and didn't want to let go of his goods. But the story continues when the disciples ask, verse 25, chapter 19, 
When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished and asked, Who then can be saved? From the next verse, Jesus answered, We, pick our, we picked our memory verse, Matthew 19, verse 26. Jesus looked at them and said, With man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Now, here ends the section with these words. But many who are first will be last, and many who are last will be first. I said this was a connected section that bookends in chapter 20 with verse 16. Matthew 20, verse 16, So the last will be first, and the first will be last. Excuse me? Notice the expression is reversed. But more importantly are the two questions we need to ask. Who are the last ones who will now be first? And who are the first ones that are now going to be last? Well, go back to the beginning of this section. Where the young man's riches placed him first in life, first in position, first in possessions. When Jesus said how hard it is for the rich to inherit the kingdom, the sad reality is this. Those who are wealthy in this life often end up poor and the next life because they trusted in their temporal wealth. The result is the rich in this world who do not trust Christ end up last or rather lost, which is consistent with what we read in the Sermon on the Mount and the Beatitudes. Blessed are the poor in spirit, poor now, who look and hope in Christ now for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. They will be rich eternally. The poor are often last in the eyes of the world. But they who by their poverty find the true riches of this life, Christ, are the first in the kingdom of heaven. One last part of Matthew's gospel that we want to note. Did you happen to notice the number of times questions were asked from chapter 19, verse 1, through chapter 22? 31 questions in all. Questions from the young man, the disciples, the crowd, the religious leaders, and then Jesus asking questions back to them all. Here is the summary that Matthew provides of the religious leaders who asked Jesus questions to trap him. Verse 46, no one could say a word in reply, and from that day on, no one dared ask him any more questions. Do you have any more questions? Jesus would say, seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Now, I won't promise all your questions will be answered in this life, but Christ promises all these things will be added to you.